Have you been told over and over again that evolution has taken 4 billion years to develop life as we know it today? What if I tell you that this is not what has accurately happened and that actually just 11 to 25 million years of the history of life account for the majority of the ancestral life forms of life as we know it today? This event, which is known as the Cambrian Explosion, which took place 540 million years ago, is posing a great challenge to the theory of evolution. So can the theory really survive this challenge? Let's explore. Good day for another Friday episode where science meets religion in pursuit of truth. Today we're going to talk about the Cambrian Explosion. This is an event that took place 540 million years ago, give or take, and it was somewhere between 11 million and 25 million years long. And they call it the Cambrian Explosion because apart from the Ediacaran which preceded it, where life forms and body plans look like this, this, and this, now we have all those brand new body plans and phyla that are popping into existence like this, this, and this. Complicated arrangements of bodies. And those phyla that appeared in the Ediacaran explosion and kept appearing until the end of the Cambrian period account for the majority of the phyla that we know today, their ancestral forms. So let's say that out, out of some 34, 35 phyla that has ever lived on the face of this planet, some 27 of them appeared in the Cambrian period alone. So how can this be the case? And how is this going to be seen as being consistent with the idea that evolution is led by random mutations and natural selection. And for random mutations to cause the effect that is claimed by evolution, those mutations have to be very, 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 very small variations in the features or traits of the individual organism because if the change is so big it's going to be disabled and it's going to be disabling and it will die. So it is not consistent with the very basic premises of the theory of evolution that such an event like the Cambrian takes place. And just for your info, the Cambrian explosion is not the one and only such event, but it is the most massive one. But the reason we are discussing it here today is that the level of novelty in the Cambrian Explosion is unprecedented. What kind of novelty? Let me tell you that this sort of body plans and life forms that we have seen in the Ediacaran were very simplistic. They did not have what we would recognize today as complicated systems. So you wouldn't find an organism, for example, with a digestive system. Maybe those organisms would absorb or adsorb minerals just right out of the water. The whole life forms were obviously marine life, even during the Cambrian explosion. And then, for example, versus just eye spots that were in the Ediacaran, you have the emergence of an eye in the Cambrian explosion. Now, when you talk to a, by an evolutionary biologist, he will tell you and you argue with him that an eye is so complex and it cannot be developed through the claimed processes of evolution. He will tell you, never mind, it started very simple and then went a very small step after a very small step after a very small step over billions of years. So number one, the billions of years argument is not there because the whole thing of the Cambrian explosion was a few million years. And then you are surprised 
that you find, for example, this creature that was swarming all over the seafloor, which is called a trilobite, which is an ancestral form of what we know as orthropods, which, of which, for example, are insects. And this trilobite that appeared in the Cambrian explosion has what we know as a compounded eye. So you have this huge transition from no eye at all. What you had in the Ediacaran is some creatures that can only sense that there is light through what is known as, for example, an eye spot. And then you have not just any eye, not a pinhole camera, not a simple eye, you have a compounded eye. And a compounded eye is something like what we see today with bees, for example, or flies. It is an, a matrix, an array of small eyes, each having a double lens, a cavity, a sensitive area, and connected through a neural link to the brain of the trilobite, which understands that it has an eye and it uses it for vision. Somebody will tell you, well, even during the Cambrian explosion, there were this other kind of eye and that other kind of eye and this other kind of eye, and some of them are simpler than that of the compounded eye of the trilobite. But guess what? All of those examples are not arranged in a lineage. It did not occur that you have an eye spot and then this simple eye and this more complex eye and then the compounded eye. No. They appeared contemporaneously, meaning they happened in parallel, not in series. So where is this very gradual and very slow evolution of life and of systems and of organs and of body plans that the theory of evolution is talking about? And is it only the eye? No. In the Cambrian explosion, you see the sudden appearance of locomotion using jointed limbs. You find exoskeletal structures. You had some shells in the ediacaran, but you have now things that look like segmented bodies, like the trilobite, with exoskeletons. You have precursors of crustaceans. You have all of those body plans that we know today popping out into existence. You have precursors of digestive systems. So all those phyla and all those body plans and all the systems and all those organs need information to be constructed. Not only information about the proteins that you need to build them, but the information that would make cells specialize, that will make cells arrange into organs, that will make those organs arrange into systems. And guess what? There is no precursor. There is no known ancestor for all of those systems, all of those complicated organs like eyes and all of those body plans. They just appeared. We know from the information theory that when you have information somewhere, it is being transmitted from a transmitter and received by a receiver. And what we have in the middle is noise. And what this noise is, what we call mutations. So, if mutations is what's building this, you need not only billions, but even trillions of years. But we don't even have the billions or the hundreds of millions. We have few million years where everything that we know today has its ancestors coming into existence during this short period of the explosion and the Cambrian era. So what have you been telling us? evolutionary biologists and science explainers. And what is your explanation for this? And why are you not confronting these facts? Why are you telling people that there are those precursors in the ediacaran, while those precursors, you cannot draw a lineage, a real lineage between the phyla of the Cambrian and that of the ediacaran. That will account for everything that we find in the Cambrian. Why don't you confront the fact that this novel complexity has no real precursors and there is no transitioning gradient 
that can be seen as consistent with the mechanisms of evolutionary biology. And now the big question and the important question is, if this wealth of information has popped into existence during the Campion explosion, who is transmitting this information and who is making it manifest? If you have questions about the Cambrian explosion and you want to take this conversation further, please give me your comments in the comment section and I will be answering it during next episode on Friday. And to expand more on this, you can also watch this episode, which was a debate with an evolutionary biologist specifically about the Cambrian explosion and this episode which was the after show where the matter of information and complexity was also discussed in length. I'm waiting for your questions and see you again next Friday where science meets religion. See you soon.